Mercedes Benz and CNBC TV 18 present Young Turks on the Road. Hello and welcome to our special series, Young Turks on the Road, in partnership with Mercedes Benz. I'm Shireen Bhan. On the show, we bring you not one, but two entrepreneurial couples Chitra Uthappa and Radha Krishnan of Aromas of Kurg, and Kunal and Deepa Jain of Vow Tables as they talk to our mentor on the show, A.D. Singh of Olive Bar and Kitchen. A.D. is going to give them advice on what it takes to make it big in the food business. First, let's introduce you to our mentor on the show today. Now, anyone who's remotely interested in fine living and dining in India has heard of A.D. Singh. For 25 years, A.D., as he's affectionately called, has steadily led the gastronomic revolution that swept India. Now, it's been quite a leap for him from being an engineering graduate from Lafayette College, Pennsylvania, to becoming one of India's best-known restaurateurs. Just Desserts, which was popular as Mumbai's first standalone dessert corner in the late 1990s, launched AD into the restaurant business. Now, unlike many first-time entrepreneurs, AD found immediate success and in 2000, he decided to open his first restaurant, Olive Bar and Kitchen. And since then, his chain of restaurants and cafes in Mumbai, Delhi, Bengaluru, Pune and Hyderabad are as loved for their cuisine as they are for their chic wine. And it is now time for us to hit the road with the Mercedes-Benz GLA. Take it away, Shruti. Everyone knows about the crazy Mumbai traffic and the potholes are legendary. But thanks to the high ground clearance of this Mercedes-Benz GLA that I've been driving for the past half hour has made me a master of these challenging roads. Well, I'm on my way to meet our first startup and I spot them right here. Time to make our first pit stop. For Chitra Uthappa and Radha Krishnan, serving authentic filter coffee in offices sounded like a perfect business opportunity given that that their roots laid in Kurg. In 2012, this husband-wife duo launched Aromas of Kurg and since then have partnered over 100 corporates and sold 30 million cups of coffee. Having grown without any external funding, Aromas of Kirk has managed to turn profitable within four years of operation. Hi guys, welcome to Young Turks on the Road. Come on, hop in. Chitra and Radha Krishnan, you've specially taken a flight from Bangalore for this mentoring session. Uh, tell me, how was the flight? Great. Yeah. It's been exciting since the last evening. Alright, so, you know, both of you have left your corporate careers. Uh, what, you were working in the industry for over a decade, you for 10 years, him for I think 15 years. Yes. Uh, what made you guys start up? Any corporates, be it big, small, medium, you will have beverage services at any um, corporate. And, uh, most of the corporates uh, had uh, vending machines and uh, yeah. um, machine coffees, which is like you get cappuccino, right. mocha, latte, yeah. and all that. Yeah. And you don't get the filter coffee or you know the, the sure. good tea. I'm basically from Kook and uh, born and brought up in Kook. Um, my dad and mom, um, we have a uh, coffee plantation yeah, back in... I was uh, just about to ask you, how, how did the love for coffee happen? He's an Iyengar and I'm a Kogi, yeah, so yeah. ours was a love marriage. Yeah, and, and coffee runs in the blood. Yes, you know, I'm the bean and he's the cup. <laughs> kind, because That's a nice way of putting it. <laughs> <laughs> to be very honest, uh, other than a couple of some big brand names, mm. uh, we are the true crop-to-cup company in India today, where we grow our own coffee, mm. Uh, we also manufacture our own coffee and we also serve it to the end consumers as a cup of coffee. You've recently launched into B2C with your roast to order model. Tell us what is that all about? The whole idea of roast to order is to ensure that you as a consumer choose to do what you wanted and just serving it just as fresh as it can. Just like how you order a fried rice, nobody gives you from the fridge, right? Yeah, they make yeah. the fried rice and they give it to you. Yeah. So that's exactly what we want to bring it. Coffee Wonderful. has to be tasted that way. All right. Alright guys, so we've reached Olive where AD Singh is waiting for us. So let's go inside and meet him. Hi AD. Hi, hi. 
pleasure meeting you. Thank you, Edi, for getting us to this wonderful olive restaurant. I believe this was the first one that came up in 2000, 16 years ago. That's right. We start our brand right here. All right. You know, let me introduce you to the husband and wife duo of Aromas, of course, Chitra Uttapai and Radhakrishnan. Hi, me. I'm going to leave you guys here and hope you have an engaging session. Today, most of our employees in the corporate, they are asking for us, you know, would we get your coffee powder? So that's where we thought, like, why don't we introduce our coffee online, you know, B2C. Right. So we have four blends as of today. And each blend, we have six different varieties of coffee uh, bean is added to that. So we would like you to help us uh, or your um, uh, opinion about how should we get into B2C market. And I think the idea of doing filter coffee in offices in an organized way with great quality has a huge opportunity in this country. And I'm sure already there will be other people doing exactly a model because it's see this is good, there's a demand. So number one, I'd say that you should scale up your B2B operations as quickly as you can. You're pretty much Bangladesh. You have a little bit in Chennai, I read. Yes. But the more you can grow the B2B business, you could be the biggest player in that because you're one of the first people to get into it the right way. Even if you have to give up a bit. Say you find a good partner in Bombay, he wants an X percent share, but he'll help you build the business, do it. Start owning this market as quickly as you can. We honestly don't believe in franchisee model because we, we believe that by franchising it, they're going to kill our quality perspective because that's the key to our business. So I understand. Right? We again also face similar issues with growth. We don't franchise at all. Yeah. We have one franchise at the airport. It's the only way we could get into the airport. But what I do believe in, it's a model that Olive is looking at if we ever go out of the country is to work with established food people in the business, food players, who we trust. Because then they already understand they are operationally strong, they bring their own quality to the table. Yes. With people like that, we would be comfortable working. And I say similarly with you. As a structure, it doesn't have to be a franchise, it can be JVs, there are many ways to work that out. You should still, of course, have total control over the quality of what you yes. do. But from what I understand that once you showed somebody what's happening, they could build it for you pretty quickly. And there are some national players, maybe like a group like uh, Sodexo or something, which uh, is already in the office space business. They're probably serving a decent quality of a cappuccino or espresso. But for India, serving a great filter coffee, they might find that very exciting. Your pricing is very competitive? Yes, it is. Yes, we are extremely affordable because we deal with corporates and they always come up with a very stringent budget because what they offer is an employee benefit. They it don't the charge service, the employees. What they give. So everywhere, all your yes, 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 all yes. because the company gives them as a uh, as a benefit. As drink a benefit, good they coffee, can just yeah. drink a cup of coffee. So they literally come to us say that I like the way you serve the coffee, but you cannot cross the red line. A few recommendations I would have. One is you've seen the paper boat example, right? Yes. yes. How yes. they tapped into our nostalgia. Yes. And they've been a fairly they very well talked about brand. The exact numbers I don't yes. know. Um, so the filter coffee is exactly like that, you know. I have like my CEO, he always grumbles when I make him drink cappuccino. He wants a filter coffee, you know. Wherever we can get that, he's having that. Um, so I'd say for, for a little older generation who've grown up with that, there's no question. They're already yes, your converts. Yes, yes. Exactly. Now the question is how do we tap into the yeah. newer markets? Yes. Perhaps we'll have the same exposure growing up. For that, there are a few things. I think. Uh, cool positioning, um, getting your product, getting your website right and what you're doing, etc. With that is very important. India is increasingly being proud to be Indian. The different phrases in the market, be Indian, drink Indian or eat Indian or wear Indian. So very much you all tap into that. You know, We are a country that is increasingly uh, appreciating ourselves. In the old days, it was all about aping the West. Yes. Now that's changing. You know, when I was in college, this many years ago, of course, Pepsi was desperately trying to cut into the Coke loyal fan base. Yes. So I don't know if you remember, they started something called the Pepsi Challenge. <laughs> and they come to the college and they'd make us do basically blind tastings. And 
and they realized, and the customer realized that actually he didn't really know the difference. Difference. So I think it's important, especially for people who are solidly, I want to only get those blends from those countries. Countries, yeah. Maybe you do your version of the Pepsi challenge and play that up. And people say, oh, the Modi government is um, one of the good initiatives they're taking. is trying to support and develop things that we are making here and can compete with. And I think this is a classic example. And my guess is that you should be able to get a lot of support through the programs that the government is pushing out. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean that you get support to put your operations into government offices, for example? If you knew that's a very, very large client right there. Are there other programs that they have to support you financially? Subsidize things, no tax, you know, tax breaks for three years, etc. So I think it's worth finding out what sort of programs incentives and support is there through the government programs for entrepreneurs like yourself. We did try government services like uh, putting up our filters in the railway station um, and in the bus t uh, stand where you know the lot of uh, uh, crowd who are uh, taking up the bus or train could uh, have filter coffee and tea. But again I'm sorry to say yes our government is doing you know a lot many things but then everywhere this political itch comes and you know this there is a lot of bribe and a lot of other things come and we like a small startup companies it's very difficult to enter or penetrate and you know get a place there well to be honest if you look at the program that uh, you all are part of today it's brought you here because they're recognizing the quality of what you're doing the way you're standing out so that recognition I say just by virtue of being on on the Young Turks is already coming I think that'll help you a lot as you keep growing the good thing is that you're running a profitable business it's just a question of speed of growth you know. yeah I think finding uh, funds also to help you grow yes, should not yes, be that difficult. Yes. And which mainly right now you should be using in marketing what you're doing. If you're wondering about growth within India, I think we've got a fairly clear blueprint and I think there's a lot of opportunity. Internationally, I know you're wondering about building the Outers online yeah, the delivery yeah, business. Yeah, yeah. I would say before that, you know we Indians are everywhere now. And in fact, the nostalgia within the Indian diaspora is, is huge. We miss our roots. It's just that for business reasons, we are all over the world. So I think there's a great opportunity even for your B2B model around the world where our diaspora is strong, which is in many, many, many markets. As it so happens, one of my very close friends, who actually introduced me to my wife, he is the MD for Sodexo across uh, Asia. I, I was trying to reach him earlier when I realized we were meeting, but he's traveling. But I will connect you with him. He can meet you unofficially, discuss it a bit. Okay. Uh, share the point you made, that okay. you're not actually serving the best product to your customer. See what he thinks and also see about overseas, okay. who he could connect you with. And let's give it a try, nothing to lose. Yes, yes, definitely. We would give, love to give a try and see. If we fail, it's okay. It's a great experience for us. But I do hope Aromas of Kurg makes the most of the connects AD is making for them. It is now time for us to take a break here on the show. But when we return, will our next startup wow our mentor? Find out after this short break on Young Turks on the Road. Mercedes-Benz and CNBC TV 18 present Young Turks on the Road.